Yeah. yeah. So let's start with that. Um, some issues in the NFL are very easy to see. And when you have a star quarterback, it's even easier to see your issues. Kansas City's offense is struggling. We know it's not Andy Reid and it's not Mahomes and it's not Kelsey. They need another receiver. Rasheed Rice and uh, Kadarius Toney, it's just not good enough. Now, again, they'll get to the playoffs. They'll win their division. They'll probably end up in the AFC Championship. I, I don't think this receiving core can beat a San Francisco or a Philadelphia. I don't. Uh, so, But it's pretty easy to see that. Denver's issues are more complex, or are they? The defense has fallen off the ledge. Probably got to spend a lot of draft capital on defense and get a new D.C. But Russell Wilson is an enigma. He's only 34 years old. He has no major injuries. He is a ghost of his former self. Listen, you can, in the Denver media, it's not Russell, it's not the offense. Yes, it is. When you trail 13 to nothing and you know it's over, it's the quarterback. You wouldn't feel that way with Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. You wouldn't feel that way with Josh Allen, uh, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson. You wouldn't feel that way. 13 nothing, hell, 10 nothing. It felt over. And that's with Cortland Sutton, a very strong number two receiver. Greg Dulcich, excellent young tight end. Upgrades on the offensive line. And Sean Payton won a Super Bowl as a winning record against every quarterback he's ever coached for any duration. Russell had a finger injury. That's it. On his throwing hand his last year in Seattle. But even that year, he finished with 103 passer rating, 25 touchdowns, just six picks. He was still really good, and that's behind a shaky O-line. 25 touchdowns, six picks, 103 passer rating, bad O-line, winning games. What my eyes tell me, I watched the entire game, and what my eyes tell me, that his mobility and elusiveness and escapability and the ability to extend plays was a much larger part of, of his success than I gave it credit for. I thought that was his off-speed pitch. I thought intelligence, pre-snap, pocket passer, and he moves a little. No, no, that's not it. I was wrong. And Pete Carroll saw it. His elusiveness, his mobility, his escapability was probably 60% of his game. I thought it was 20 or 30. He's a pitcher that threw 99, and now it's 93. And that's the difference between an all-star pitcher and getting hit. That's it. I gave his pocket awareness IQ a lot of credit. I always sought the elusiveness. Hey, it, it, it's a great curveball. What a nice additive. Now that was it, and he's going to be 35 soon, and it's not there. Pete Carroll knows personnel. He's like, hey, if it's just going to be pocket stuff, Gino's better than Russ. And right now, the last year and a half, Gino is better than Russ throwing from the pocket. So, and it's not going to get better. Russell's getting older. So, plus, and the weird thing is, from what we can tell from players literally saying publicly they didn't love Russ in Seattle, he wasn't beloved in that locker room. And he was an insider. He was Pete's guy. He drafted him. John Snyder, Pete, that was our guy. They protected him. We've seen stories now. They kind of protected him. He's not Sean Payton's guy. He's an outsider in Denver with a big mansion on the hill and the beautiful wife. He's an outsider. So he doesn't have that protective mechanism, which I don't think he realized quite in Seattle. He saw Pete sometimes as a barrier to his success. But the truth is in the NFL, if the GM and the coach draft you and you win a Super Bowl, they're your ally. Doesn't mean they think you're perfect. They're going to go look at Mahomes' workout. They're going to go watch Josh Allen's workout. But you're their guy. Them finding you in the third round, that makes Pete and John look like geniuses, too, and you. So um, how do you fix the defense? It's not that hard. It really isn't. Go hit on four draft picks. Seattle did it. You can hit on four draft picks, get a new D.C. You can fix stuff in a year. Bill Parcells, as a GM, took the Dolphins from 1-15 and 15 to 11 wins with Tony Sperano as the coach. He found a guy like you, coach. I'll fix the roster. You can fix, you can fix a lot of problems in this league easily. Uh, the Russell Wilson component fixing, uh, not easy. He talked after. We, we had a chance, and I think we just got to play better, play cleaner. I got to, I got to play better, and, and uh, that's, that starts with me. Our defense played great tonight. Uh, they battled all night. Um, 
they came over with a pick and uh, our defense did and, and uh, could have had two on, you know and and they did, they did a really good job of keeping us in the game. I think offensively, uh, we, str we we had some really good things, and then um, you know we obviously the two turnovers by me is unacceptable. We can't happen. So now it gets interesting. Mike Lombardi is a former NFL GM. He had a tweet this morning. He said nobody's going to touch Russell Wilson now, but if he's on the roster for the fifth day of the league year in 2024, his 2025 salary becomes fully guaranteed, and that's 37 million bucks. Yikes. The Broncos will have to eat the $17 million guaranteed for the 2024 season as Wilson either continues to play or move to the TV booth. You can honestly say without one ounce of hesitation, the next 11 games are the last games Bronco fans will see Wilson in their uniform. And I believe it's the only reasonable conclusion. Great college quarterback draft class. Denver currently has the number two pick. Sean Payton wants his guy. You can keep running this back. It doesn't work. Russ is going to be 35. I made a mistake. I thought his running and elusiveness was a small component to his game. It was much bigger. We've discovered that Lamar Jackson is a much better thrower than people gave him credit for. Just the opposite. Lamar is actually really good in the pocket. The running is an additive, a great additive. With Russell, we gave the pocket stuff too much credit. Greg Cosell for years and years said, I don't love it. I should have listened better. But listen, you can have untenable situations, tire fires, and fix them overnight. Houston's a great example. One year ago, Houston was an unstable, unmitigated disaster ownership now. Now they have a star quarterback on the rise, cheap for the next four years, a defensive coach people like, and they found a couple of really nice pieces, weapons in the draft. They can go to free agency big because they don't pay C.J. Stroud. You get the quarterback right and on the cheap, and you get the coach right, and Sean Payton's a good coach. You get fast in this league, even if you're a mess. And Denver's got really rich owners, the best corner arguably in the league. They've upgraded the O-line some pieces they could move, and the number two pick in the draft. Go draft Drake May, and then spend the rest of the draft on defensive players. Resign Patrick Sertain, build around him, go get your quarterback. Things change very quickly in this league. And, and, and by the way, not all quarterback struggles are the same. So Justin Fields struggled, right? But he's cheap. He's in his prime. There's other people. We don't know if the coach can coach. Russell's older, out of his prime, and Sean Payton's a brilliant offensive coach. Who gives a rip about that stupid call at the end of the half you don't like? Lincoln Riley made a call last week for USC that was egregious. Caleb Williams scored a touchdown because he's Caleb Williams. So Russell, Justin Fields, you may say, he didn't have a ring, but he's in his prime and he's inexpensive, and he's learning. Russell's out of the learning years. That's not the issue here. And I want you to listen to Sean Payton. After the game, this is a message up the food chain in Denver. Obviously, offensively, we struggled throwing the ball. Our third down numbers were poor. Tonight was a game where we certainly played well enough defensively, but offensively, from a third down perspective, keeping drives going, you know, we struggled to get anything until you know, really late in the game. To win in our league, you, you got to be better throwing the ball, especially, you know, I don't think the wind was that big of a factor. He mentioned that four times. Throwing the ball, got to throw the ball. Win wasn't a factor. We can't throw the ball. Third down, got to throw the ball. We can't throw the ball. He didn't draft him. Pete Carroll tried to keep quiet when he let Russ go, right? May have leaked a thing or two. The Seahawks did a thing or two. But it was like, hey, best wishes. That's not the case here. There are, there are no best wishes. Unless they can get out of his contract and get Drake May. Then it's, then it's all full steam ahead. But this is messaging up the chain. You've got to be able to throw the ball. And Denver can't. 95 passing yards. Cortland Sutton, good tight end. Read on offensive line. I like Williams. The running back's a beast. Sean Payton. Stop with Sean Payton. He knows what he's doing. People used to crush Andy Reid. Then he got Mahomes, and people forgot about the clock issues. Coaches make mistakes all the time. It's a live, fluid game. They make mistakes all the time. That didn't decide the game. 95 passing yards is deciding the season.